Welcome. Happy Halloween. Samhain blessings to you all. We return again here to create a beloved community, acting together with compassion, reason, and respect, empowering us to promote a just society. Our service here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta is going to be led by Jezebel Anat, Noah Hinton, Charlie Hinton, musician Robin Macy, guest musician Kathy Benedetto, and of course, all of you. We want to welcome our visitors here today. Uh, please look for a blue card in the seat pocket in front of you. Uh, filling that out will make it easier for you to keep in touch with us and everything that's going on here, and also for us to keep in touch with you. We would love to be able to chat with you, connect with you more after the service today at our coffee hour. So please uh, hang around after and, and spend some time with us. Uh, we will be able to recognize you from those orange name tags. Um, and we're very, very happy you've joined us today. Whether you're here for the first time or the thousandth, I sincerely hope you get what you need today. Now we do have a few announcements to get through. There's a lot of events happening here and it's getting very, very exciting. So first, our rebooted jazz concert launched on Friday and it was a huge success. Yeah. <laughs> we had 63 people in the audience and we easily surpassed our revenue goal for the event. So thank you to everyone who helped to make that possible, uh, including our sponsors and our volunteers. Um, and I hope you guys will uh, consider coming out to the next events that are, that are coming up uh, next year. The UUA Article II Study Commission has done a beautiful job drafting proposed new UU principles and purpose language, and they want you to be part of that conversation. Uh, Reverend Nick shared how to get involved with this process through Realm and on Facebook this past week. So please look for that if you may have missed it so you can get involved in that. Uh, today is the last day of uh, the food drop off with Golden Harvest Fall Food Drive, um, an annual food drive founded by a former member of UUCA, Evelyn Brown. It's spooky to be hungry. And speaking of scary, the Fields and family, that's us. <laughs> We're inviting you over to watch uh, a scary movie night at our house and enjoy a chili cook-off. Um, it's at our house at 6.30 tonight. Um, please bring blankets, sweaters, a chair. It's an outdoor movie night. Um, so it will be chilly, but there will be chili. Um, and uh, there's a link there to vote for your movie choices and right now Coraline and Coco are winning so if you want to come out to watch that please join us this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m we'll have the second month of our ecstatic dance program here in the sanctuary this is a wonderful way to meet your spiritual practice needs and if you're unsure of what to do, don't worry. We do have an expert who will guide you. Um, I went last month. It was amazing. Please consider coming out and seeing uh, what Ecstatic Dance is all about. Uh, we're also going to be hosting a Thanksgiving dinner at 1 p.m. on Thanksgiving. Everyone is invited to come and bring along a dish to share. If you'd like to sign up, please visit tinyurl.com UUCA thanks 22. And now Alan George has one more important announcement to share. Good morning. There will be a special congregational meeting to call Reverend Nick Filson to be our settled minister on next Sunday November 6, following the service at 1230. The election to call Reverend Nick as our settled minister will use a hybrid model. I think we have a slide up here that shows that model. I'll kind of walk you through it real quick. 
Traditional in-person voting will take place in the sanctuary. In-person paper ballots and traditional proxy votes will be the only way to vote on November 6. Printed proxy forms are now available at the church and can be accepted up until 12.15 p.m. on next Sunday. If you have questions, please contact Board Secretary Pat Lynch-Hayes. And uh, if I don't know if Pat's here today, but I checked her mailbox outside of Reverend Nick's office, and there's a nice little stack of proxy forms there if you want to pick one up today. Optional online voting opened at noon on Monday, October 24th, and will close at 11.45 p.m. on Friday, this coming Friday, November 4th. Emails with your unique voting link went out to all members who signed up with an email address on file with us. If you'd like to vote online, um, you need to, to uh, answer or click on the link to uh, register for online voting and to place your vote uh, online before this coming Friday. Let's see. Um, the system we're using was recommended by the URA to guarantee that this will be a secret ballot. So we'll know what the count is, but we won't know who voted yes, no, or abstain. After you submit an online vote, you're encouraged to come and observe the in-person voting next Sunday here in the sanctuary. Tabulation and announcement of final results will take place then. Uh, you may join us in person at 1230 next Sunday on the observer's side of the room. To join online to watch uh, via Zoom, you can use the regular Sunday service link to do that. Zoom attendance will be for observation only. So the only way to vote online is to use that email that you should have received last Sunday, last Monday, excuse me. A ministerial vote requires a 50% membership quorum. Membership as of October 17th is 105. Therefore, we need at least 53 participants and the vote must be 90% in the affirmative in order to pass. Now, we've been lucky that we've uh, gotten to know Reverend Nick and his family over the past 15 months, and uh, this is a lot longer than what, what usually happens in a called ministerial process. So I think that based on how much we've grown to know and love Nick and his family, this is our opportunity to show our commitment to Reverend Nick and his family. He has demonstrated his commitment to us as a congregation, to the church, and to the city of Augusta. And it's super important that we all show up and show our support for Reverend Nick. Thank you. And now to fully enter the service, take a deep breath and let's begin. The pumpkins are orange, the apples are red, the leaves fall down from the trees overhead. I love fall, but it's nearly over. We should savor lovely October. And by June DiLorenzo, I wanna make sure she gets credit for that beautiful poem. This is our Samhain service. For those who don't know, Samhain is an ancient Gaelic word meaning summer's end. It's the end of the harvest season, and it's a time when we honor our ancestors, 
And it's not just our familial ancestors, but our forebears, all of the generations of humanity that have allowed us to be here and in this place. So as you can see over there, we have what is our ancestor altar for this service. Samhain shares many connections with All Souls Day, All Saints Day, Dia de los Muertos. So we're going to be opening with a special song that Kathy Benedetto will be singing. During this song, I will first light the candles on the ancestor altar, and then everyone who brought mementos of their departed is welcome to come forward and place them on the altar. And our departed can also mean beloved dogs and cats and animal companions as well as human. to those who were here on this lands before us. For we reside on the traditional lands of the Westo people, the Savannah Shawnees, and Uchi people to the Muskogee Confederacy. 
And we also recognize the powers around us of the four elements, air, fire, water, and earth, air of thought, fire of passion, water of emotion, earth of stability. And so our opening hymn is a chant by the reclaiming community called When We Are Gone to remind us that though our forms change, the world, the elements around us endure. time for all ages. We'll re re invite everyone to remain in their seats for the spoken part. And then at the end, for those who read the announcements that we were dressing up, kids of all ages will be invited to come up and we will do a procession of costumes around the chalice. Why do we dress up at this time of year? Things are not as they might appear. We love to pretend and be what we're not, beyond the limits of rule and thought. For some, this is simply a chance to be merry, to go out and collect all the treats they can carry. But these costumes are more than make-believe. They are a part of the web we weave. The nights grow long, the wind blows cold, and we celebrate a holiday that's very old. When the leaves are turning to yellow and red, it's Halloween, Samhain, Day of the Dead. The summer is gone, the harvest is stored, and we honor the ones who have gone before. They have passed on, and their souls are freed, so we remember their lives and deeds. 
And now some believe that the dead return from tomb, from grave, from coffin and urn, perhaps as ghosts, perhaps as spirits, a rustling in the wind for those who can hear it. We decorate our altars to greet them. We offer the bread and the salt as we meet them. Our costumes and masks are more than a game as we share their memories and speak their names. Once people could dress as the spirits of night, as ghosts and skeletons by candlelight, first to guide the dead on their way, and then for merriment and play. But for when the dead return to the earth, it's a time for reverence, a time for mirth, and we hold them deeply in our hearts, though we know that they must depart. And as we remember the ones that we knew, as they enter the gate that we all pass through, we can respond with love, not fear. And so we dress up at this time of year. There's a common practice in the ancient world across continents that those who have passed on are buried with gold, coins, money, and precious gifts. Why is this? It's not just for royalty to flaunt their accumulated wealth. It was often as humble as a single coin. The mythos varies, but one well-known practice is placing a coin over the eyes or in the mouth. This served two purposes. First, to make sure the soul remains in the next life and doesn't return to the body once it's placed in the tomb. And second, to provide fare for the journey to the next life. Charon of the River Styx demands a coin for passage across the river to the underworld. This payment is referred to as Charon's obol or viaticum, which is Latin for sustenance for the journey. This phrase is used even today to refer to Christian last rites. A gift from one person to another to provide them sustenance for their journey does not need to be left to a funeral rite. What if we looked at our time, our money, our skills as sustenance for the journey that we can give to each other throughout life too? What if we placed a precious coin in the hands of those we care about to ensure their personal journey continues? And what if we were humbled by the coins that are gifted to us to help us along our way. None of us have to go it alone or empty handed if we all give generously now. Let us make sure this community has sustenance for the journey ahead. Would the ushers please come forward to collect these gifts? Thank you. 
Thank you for your generosity. Death is a mysterious truth. Yet our only certainty. A familiar enigma. That punctures our heart. Daily we wrestle our own mortality. Within nature's cycles of growth and decay. Be not attached to the form. For everything changes. The conclusion of a life well lived. Painful, but comprehensible. The severance of a life in full flower. Inexplicable agony. We gather, we grieve. We mourn, we adjust. Be not attached to the form. For everything changes. The vibrant being. Now a sad void. The shadow lands loom. To remind us of life's value. Cherish our existence. Soon we shall be the ancestors. Be not attached to the form. For everything changes. Greetings all. I'm Natalia Bowden and I'm here representing the Memorial Garden Committee today. And if anybody's wondering what my costume is, um, I'm one of my favorite characters from the book of Genesis. I'm Joseph with the multicolored dream coat. <laughs> Though I will admit that I often wear this outside of Halloween when I need a special reminder about the power of forgiveness. Um, so I just wanted to share a few words with you about the Memorial Garden and the importance of it for our community. And at the end of the service, we will invite you to join us to a recessional into the garden. In the garden, we honor those who came before us, those who were a cherished part of, a, of our community and who gave their gifts of love to us, either as poetry, like Hoyt Goodson, who is there on the altar with his book and his photo, or as voices in our choir, like Cheryl Linson Mayer, or as charter members of this church, like Peggy Kelly, or as activism and trailblazing, like Kay O'Hannison, who dared to help create the first integrated kindergarten in Augusta. We honor Joseph, Joey, Ibarra Trena, committed, talented, and passionate political and social activist. There in the garden, we honor the beloved partner Erica Pohl, beloved partner of Joe Patchen, our longtime former music director. We honor Janet Reichert, outspoken and strong-willed, curious and tender, who I came to know in the Buddhist group we held for several years here at the church. I shared hours and correspondences with her before she passed, and there in the nursing home, we would talk about the challenges, the gifts and questions that arose with meditation. And then we would share stories and, and pictures of our beloved and mischievous cats. 
We honor Don and Elaine Law, who gave freely of their talents and their humor. And we honor Earl Rice, the gifted artist who made, carved this beautiful, um, this beautiful chalice. <laughs> Thank you. The word went right out of my head. Not only this chalice, but our beautiful bowls that we give generously um, during offertory to the church. And we honor Hazel Burt, Alice Reese's dear mother. These are fathers, mothers, grandparents, children, spouses, and partners, but most of all, they are dearly beloved friends. All of these who came before us, who gave us their gifts to us, their gifts of love and passion and activism, of humor and labor, gifts of welcome and community. We honor them today in our garden and always. I would like to ask all of you who gave to the creation, planning, or care of the Memorial Garden through these years to stand, please, whether you gave with funds, um, with your hands, or committee membership. If you could rise so we can thank you. Thank you all. And we welcome you to join us at the end of the service in the garden. And I invite you to consider how you can help play a part in our memorial garden and helping to memorialize our beloveds and our church history who have given so much to us. If you would love to um, contribute funds, we would love to welcome that. <laughs> um, and or if you would like to give a bench or some other addition to the garden, we would we would very much welcome that. And if you would like to reserve a stone for yourself or for a beloved, also, please reach out to me or Richard Dellenbeck or Helen Baisden, the other current members of the Memorial Committee. And most of all, may we always remember to honor the love and the care that is the backbone of this church and community. Thank you. And at this point in our service, instead of our usual joys and sorrows, <clears throat> we invite you to come up, if whoever would like to come up and speak about someone who has passed, does not have to be someone in our church community. We have had many losses this year, but we speak their names so that they shall be remembered and not forgotten. I'm putting a picture of um, a woman who was well known in the outlying community and not so much within our church, um, Pat Hall. She did a lot in our community from early on having a bookstore, but also I got to know her. She did blessing bags for um, the Golden Harvest at Master's Table. But she has a lasting presence on this campus we have an adjoining um, place beside the memorial garden which is our labyrinth and several years ago pat hall donated the peace pole that you see out there so i think of pat every time i go by that peace pole and i'm also putting a picture of my parents um, <clears throat> this is um about Graham, who passed away in June, and um, he just lives in my heart, and, um, and everything he's done for me. And many of us remember Graham and miss him very much. Um, I'd like to start a tradition for myself, or continue a tradition that I started in Southern California, um, we would go to the local St. Jude's Hospital on, um, it was around New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve, and once a year we would give in honor of someone we have lost. I had lost my brother. He was 21 years old for two weeks, and it devastated my, my family. Anyway, um, I want to continue that tradition here. I've just donated online uh, in, in his name, in honor of him, 
um, although there wasn't a place to say in honor of, uh, maybe for future. Um, but I want to continue that tradition here and to honor him um, every year and think about him. I'm Barbara Bowen, and those in my heart to remember today are my parents, Howard and Jean Chase. Some of you got to know them. Uh, I've been missing them for a few years now. Uh, and also, just last year, I lost my roommate, Linda Walsh, whom a few people knew. She never really got to come to the church, but you know, I'm missing her this year. She died just a year ago. And then just last month, I lost a friend who I had not had enough time to get to know named Max Blair. And he died so suddenly, so many of us were stunned by it. You know, so it's a reminder that we never know how long we have with people. And we should cherish every minute that we do have. So I've brought with me not people who've passed in the last year, but, but a few people who that were close to me throughout life. Um, my father, Joseph Pennington Benedetto, who was an Air Force navigator in World War II. My mother, Barbara, or Barushka, uh, Swartz Benedetto. Um, and Vic, my, my wife's parents, my, my in-laws, um, Orpha and Bill McGrainer. Um, about who I wrote a song about when we first met and who Bill Spirit has been with me through my entire relationship with my wife, making sure that we're safe as can be and that we, we can find ways to <laughs> work through whatever <laughs> is problematic. And Orpha, who died about two years ago, who was with us for about 12 years. And then my brother Frankie, in the, the frame with the red mat and the uh, Frankie, I sometimes think he was my twin. He was older than me, but um, he was had Down syndrome, and he was a great brother and just very joyous. And I always think of him on his 50th birthday when he finally figured out the party was for him because when they delivered the cake, they had a photograph of him up on top. As soon as he saw that, he realized the, par the party was for him. And his grin literally just about wrapped itself around his entire face. So... He, and he always is with me when, when there's any loss. This is in memory of my son-in-law, Cliff Kesey, who came to this church, raised his children in this church, and, and died of cancer at a very early age. But it's going to be a silly ending for this very ominous service. For those of you who don't, who don't know me, I'm one of your longest members. Not, and maybe the oldest because September the 24th, I celebrated my 85th birthday. Wow. I survived. <laughs> this is the hard part. I survived ovarian cancer in 1994. Several years later, they took out half my colon, thinking that I had colon cancer, but it turned out to be benign. Three weeks ago, I felt a lump in my right breast. When the doctor looked at the scan, she says, this looks like cancer. Let's do a biopsy. On, t on Monday at 2 o'clock, I go in to get the results of the biopsy. My daughter asked me this morning, do you want to go to church this morning? And I said, I need to go to church this morning. Because at my age and with my history, there will be some decisions that we'll have to make if it turns out to be cancer. I'm strong, but I'm 85. I love all of you. And I need the love and the support of my community right now. Oh, Lord. Oh, 
hold you in the light. Um, I would also like to recognize Pat Hull, who is a dear friend of mine. Um, Pat's email address was be here now, and her life was really a ministry about living in the moment and appreciating every moment we have. She, she really was an amazing person, and she was the person that really taught me how to meditate, so I'm so grateful to her. Um, also, John Seaton, Reverend Bob Hunt, Keel Alderson, and someone I greatly admired, Queen Elizabeth II. Anyone else? I did want to mention another, am I on? I did want to mention a, another long-term member who passed several years ago that many of you knew, Bill Votrin. He was very active here. He was in the choir. He was in our pagan group. And once he was diagnosed with um, the cancer he was really determined to do as much as he could and he came out and he was our criminologist in rocky horror so he really wanted to make the most of his time which sometimes people ask me why do you do so much because i don't know how long i'll be able to do it and our downtown community lost a member who was not here but anyone who ever went to First Friday Fire, or 80s Night, or Atmosphere at Le Chat Noir, or any of the many parties and events in downtown Augusta will know DJ Kodak, Paul Marsh, who was the heart of much of our communities. He was active in a lot of community groups. He was the DJ when we did a crazy flash mob one year for Westaboo, and it just seemed like almost every show, it's like, okay, Paul's doing the music and he did weddings and things like that as well. And he was such a presence, and he did a lot to bring the many, many different and sometimes alternative communities together, and was wonderful at making people who were sometimes excluded from more mainstream events, and you guys know what I'm talking about, at making everyone feel welcome and safe and included for who they were. He accepted people. He talked to people, he honored people, and he has left a big hole in our downtown community. And if you see the, the flower I put on the altar, he was always known for wearing a flower. And so we will conclude our remembrances. I know some of you may have some in your heart that you may not want to share because I know some people are not comfortable getting up here and speaking. And I know some people have lost some other people who were beloved or have lost some beloved animal companions. So we honor all of those who have gone before in this song called Prayer by the Dead by Sharon Knight and T. Thorne Coyle. So we should have a slide for that on there. Thank you.
order. We are moving into the dark time of the year and the dark increases until solstice and now all the Christmas lights are already out and all the tinsel and all the things that want to make us happy. This is a transition time. We are moving from the growing season into the fallow season, into the time of the waning year into the time where we move from outdoor to indoor, and even in the south, it's been cooler than usual for this time of year. And it's a reminder of the full cycle of life that includes the time of decay and withering as we sink into the earth as the fallen leaves that blaze and then lose their color and fall on the ground. We're often sad, and it's normal to be sad. We sometimes in this culture don't want to acknowledge death or feel that all these feelings must be repressed and not dealt with, and usually repressing them leads to a lot more mental and physical ills than allowing ourselves to express, to have the time for mourning, to have the time for picnicking on the grave and remember those who were here with us sharing their favorite drink and their favorite food. And some of us have had people in our lives who might have been cruel or abusive, and we don't necessarily mourn their loss, but we also know that they were a flawed human being in the cycle of life. And we can also release them into the span of eternity and let go of the hurts that were done for us. Not necessarily forgiving because we may not be able to, but acknowledging the complex array of feelings around those who have passed on, those that we lost, and realizing how fragile life can be for all of us. And it is that time, like the leaves, as we approach the winter, we blaze. So I'm going to leave you with that for our reflection. I feel like our hearts are full of memories. And with our closing hymn, when the saints go marching in, it's a lively hymn. And death, we are so used to somber death and sad death, but think of La Catrina, the laughing skeletons in the Dia de los Muertos celebrations. And if you see in much medieval art, the dance of death, and it's not that we have to, we're celebrating it or anything, but also acknowledging the love and the connection that we've had because we are sad because we had these wonderful connections with these beloved people and we can honor their memory and they would not want us to be sad. They would want us to continue. And I said this to some of the other performers when we were all sad about what was coming up or what are we going to do without Paul? He wanted us to continue. That's why he created all of these events. And our beloveds want us to continue to live our lives and have joy. So with that, let us move into when the saints come marching in. And Owen, I know you're really good, so I'm going to throw a drum at you. <laughs> Let's come in on the second verse on the drums.
and the souls. And our usual custom is to sing Spirit of Life in here. But after our closing words and extinguishing the challenge, I invite everyone who would like to, we will head out into the memorial garden carefully. We have to use the side door because the big ones don't open anymore. And I'll ask them, if you don't mind helping, if anyone is mobility challenged and needs a little help coming up and down the stairs. And Kathy's going to bring her guitar, and we are going to sing Spirit of Life out there with our departed. We felt that would just be a way to connect with our beloved. And take a moment and breathe as we gather ourselves. We gather in our Samhain energy. It may be a hard winter. We are looking at a lot of political situations and elections and things that are way scarier than costumes and monsters with fake blood. But we are strong as we gather round the chalice and we keep our inner fires stoked so we may go forward to continue the work of our beloved. Her wishes may follow me out to the memorial garden. I'm going to take this out with me. Again, if folks want to stay in a sanctuary, if there's uh, any amount of mobile ability, it's fine. We'll, we'll show you what's going on out here. I just have my wisdom teeth out. Oh, <laughs> love's got balance under here. You okay? Yeah. Are you okay? I will be. <laughs> Mine's temporary. <laughs> you okay? Just three one.
First of all, I want to thank you all for coming out here because when I first mentioned it, everyone said you want to do what? But this is a song that we can either share from way before I was here because of our theme song. And any of the people that whose names are here, Lincolnmeyer, I didn't know all of them, but I knew Erica and Bennett. We sang this out here, not out here, we sang this together many times in the sanctuary. So as you as we sing, Kathy's going to lead us in a minute on guitar. Let's also remember um, that we sang well. Because at some point, the ones who are younger may be singing this in memory of us. So hopefully many years down the road. But Music and memory of Spirit of love. Spirit of life, come unto me. Say, the stirrings of compassion blow in the wind rise in the sea move in the hand giving life the shape of justice news on me Set me free, Spirit of Life, come to me, come to me. May the Spirit of Life abide within us as we remember and honor those who have gone before. Now it is a gateway time of the year, as we remember the past, as we also look to our future. This is also the winter time, the time of contemplation, the time of deciding what we will plant next year. And we have a great opportunity for planting our future in the upcoming elections and in being vigilant to the signs around us. Um, what we can do. For sometimes in the story of life, we forget our own power. But we come out here, and I, I want to sing this again for us now, that we can take this song and this energy into shaping our beloved community. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, sing in my heart of the stories of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the steam, move in the Living life, the shape of justice, rules all me close, clean set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. community. May we never stop singing and may we always raise our voices in remembrance, love, and power. We have cookies and coffee awaiting us. Anyone wants to remain out?